Bienvenido a Chisme Café. Buenos días todos, ¿cómo están? Uh, we're going to start with an announcements, uh, just so we have a good routine schedule what we're doing. Um, the announcements is next week, uh, Morgan and I are actually going to be snowboarding, not in the same location. Uh, she's planning on going to Idaho, and I will be in Arizona. I'm actually seeing my cousin Eduardo. Um, that, in regards to that, uh, the podcast might, might not happen. If I convince uh, Eduardo to do it with me, then we'll do one. If not, uh, we'll have to just skip that week. Um, do you have anything else there, Morgan? No, I don't think so. No announcements for me. Oh, no, I think we're, we're good. I guess uh, we are wearing our Bare Bones media shirts. Uh, they do have a little embroidered, a uh, little bear. Um, so if you are interested in them, you know, it would help out the channel. It would help us kind of get some things going. Uh, we don't really know pricing yet, but they're, they're not going to be too expensive. So if you want to help us out, they do have a cool little bear on them. Uh, so that leads into uh, what is the chisme, Morgan, of this week? So chisme that I found um, was... So, I'll start with a little, like, more heavy-hearted one. Um, so there was a big volcano eruption in Indonesia. Um, I think it was Mount Semeru. Can't, I don't know how to say it, but... And then, um, second was, um, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, goes to his old 7-Eleven and buys a snicker for all the ones he stole when he was a kid. That's that's pretty funny that he, he did that. Um, yeah, because I, I think he was, yeah, that's so the pretty article funny. That, <laughs> the article that I read was that he would go, and he was very poor growing up, so he would go to the 7-Eleven, and it would be his pre-workout snack. So he would go steal a Snickers and then eat it before he worked out. And then I mean, the cashier, the, it was the same cashier every day, so he would just like turn a blind eye, kind of, and just like <laughs> let him do it. Oh, I guess it makes, it makes sense. I mean, you gotta get your gains somehow, even if you gotta steal them, I guess. <laughs> but that is pretty funny. Uh, the cheese man I have is uh, a lot of people are actually, uh, the population, I think it's between uh, 16 and, 6 to 20 percent is deficient of B12. Uh, vitamin, so, what does that do? Uh, yeah. B12 actually is a, it's naturally found in animal foods and also added to uh, supplements. Um, B12. Just hold it. Oh, yeah. So you don't like look down there. Uh, vitamin B12 is needed for, uh, to form red blood cells and DNA. It also is a key player to function and development of brain and nerve cells. Um, so we're actually, if you don't eat um, meats, it's kind of where you get deficient. But I was really surprised about it. Um, just because when it said six to twenty percent, that's a large population of deficiency. So some of the symptoms of, of being deficient is, uh, you know, sleepiness. You're kind of groggy. You're slow. You know, if you're not forming those blood cells, you're kind of going in a slow motion. So I thought that was really interesting. Just cheese man. So some people are actually deficient on B12. So you know, if you're deficient, you know, maybe check it out. Talk to your doctor. But it is something to keep in mind. The other cheese man I found, uh, President Bukele uh, from El Salvador. He's the president of El Salvador. And uh, he ordered 10,000 troops uh, to the capital. Um, so basically, President Bukele has been, since March, has been kind of deconstructing the gangs in El Salvador. Um, so his, one of his other resorts right now, his last one right now, is to bring 10,000 troops and he's going to get all the gang members out of the capital. Um, so how is like, how's the country reacting to President Bukele? Because I know he's like a newer president and he's like enacting a lot of change yeah. and I mean change for the good, yes, right? Yes. But like just a lot of change for the country. So how is like the country reacting? So President Bukele, um, my dad's from El Salvador, so he's only heard good things about it. Um, so there's two perspectives. You have the people that have been under the gang's rule for a long periods of time, you're talking 10 to 15 years, I think. Um, so they're really supportive. I think he's got like 90% um, like support from the country, and then 70% actually support this uh, 10,000 
10,000 troops to come to the capital and get this done. So he has a very supportive. Uh, that being said, my dad's actually going to El Salvador here in uh, December, and he wants to check it out just to see what it is. Because last time he went, three, four years ago, um, it was kind of not what he would remember in the sense of like, gang members kind of had everything under control. You kind of had your head down. And uh, he was telling me in the sense that when you arrive, they're already wondering who you are. And he had to have a, it would, I would say a background check in the sense that they had to see who he was. All the gang members ran him and they had to go to what I would consider the OGs, so the people that were gang members before and have gotten older, um, just to kind of get clearance. Uh, okay. so, so it was kind of a, you know, kind of bad situation, but since dad's gone in December, he's heard really good things. Capital's getting cleaned up. All the little cities are getting cleaned up. There's no like gang members out there, which is, you know, a very supportive thing because from, you talk to anybody in Central America from that area, El Salvador is a very pretty place. Um, it's just, just, it's just, it was been ran. Run with gangs. Exactly. So no one can really go and visit. And isn't uh, President Bukele like trying to up the tourism yes. there too? So like yes. his goal of this is to clean up the gangs and then also get more money coming into the country because it's a very poor country. And so I didn't know this, and you told me this maybe a couple months ago. Um, explain the currency thing in C Central America. Okay, so in most countries in Central America, you have, uh, you know, your own country's money. Uh, El Salvador used to have their own currency, uh, but a few years back they went to the American dollar, which wrecked their economy because most people make $8 in a week. So try to imagine making $8 in American currency and try to survive. So a lot of people in that country work, you know, they're always working and they're literally living um, with small amounts and they actually depend a lot with having family members in the, uh, the United States to send them money back to survive. Um, so President Bukele is trying to make this a tourism, you know, bring money into the country and actually help the people. That's why he has such a huge high rating of, um, you know, support because he, you know, he's getting stuff done and he's really pushing to improve the country, which is a good thing in the sense of, you know, my dad's even excited to go out there, which if you would have asked him a couple of years ago before this, he said, and I would quote, quote him, I'm never going back there because it was, it's not what you want to see. So right. uh, just from that perspective, it's good to hear that and President much, Bukele is doing that. And how much family does your dad still have there? Um, for the most part, let's say about 70%. Uh, most, so has your dad heard much from his family down there? Or is it just like pretty much they're saying what you see on the news? Yes, yep, basically. Um, so he talks to them on a weekly basis. Uh, so yeah, he only hears good things and it's clearing up. So it's a good supportive Thing. I know my uncle Pedro is also going to be down there during that time, so it should be a good opportunity. Right. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's what. So hopefully, if it all checks out, when I wants to check it out, then Morgan and I can probably, you know, we can make the trip down there and check it out for ourselves. And hopefully, we can go during like the Christmas time. Because yeah. explain like the Christmas traditions down there. So from you know uh, Christmas here in the United States is kind of traditional. You know, you have your families, but down there it's like a huge party. Like it's the it's that's where you want to be for Christmas. It's just like it's celebrated differently. And is it down like is it in the capital or is it just all across the whole country they do this? All across the whole country. So from what my dad's experiences were from what he tells me and what his family does is like, you know, if you're walking on the street, people invite you into their home. Like it's just that open. Um, things have kind of changed with the whole uh, gang member thing, so they're hopefully it comes back and then um, you know that same attitude and culture comes back, but that's what he remembers as a kid um, from what, you know, he uh, talks about. It's just, they buy fireworks and they, like, it's a huge show of just what they do, uh, but Christmas is a big thing. It's not just like our, like, yeah. American culture exactly. where you go to a family members on Christmas Eve, you go to the next family yeah. members on Christmas Day, it's just a close-knit group, and it's a lot of like dancing yeah. and partying yeah. and it's what, like a whole two weeks pretty I, much? Yeah, I believe so. It's uh, everything, I think from Christmas to like New Year's, it's just a big party. You're always eating, uh, you know, eat pupusas, uh, a lot of pupusas, a lot of good food down there. 
um, but yeah, that's kind of just kind of the Christmas. So hopefully when my dad goes down there and get more information, kind of his insight, but he hasn't, he hasn't been back there since three years. Um, and that was during a different time. So hopefully it's a whole different perspective for him. And then how, so going back to the gangs and President Bukele kind of cleaning that up, do you know how many like gang members he has kind of taken care of at this point? Yeah, it was, I think if, I think I remember the article, it was like 50,000 gang members that he's in, he's in prison. So, uh, you know, the population of Sauter isn't that large. Like it's probably 7 million. And depending on where it's at, I might be overshooting it. But, you know, if you take that large a quantity of people, that's a big, that's a big effect, especially if you're thinking like 50,000 people, that's a, that's a modern sized town in the United States. Um, so he's cleared them up and he's, you know, he's, he has his viewpoints on, you know, uh, injustice to humans, but the majority of the people of this country support him. And, uh, you know, I, I like to see that he's doing that just because from my dad's perspective, it's, it's a good thing to, you know, to be happy to go back to you know, his country that he grew up in. Right, and to hopefully see it in, like, what he remembers when he was growing up. Obviously, he didn't have the easiest childhood yep. growing up in El Salvador, but at least get back to the friendly, more, like, communal, com yeah. like, sense of living versus I'm scared to talk to my neighbor because am I going to say something yeah. wrong type thing. So, and I'm sure President Bukele has gotten a lot of um, backlash yeah. from other countries, but... I think with his following and his people being so supportive, he's he's on the right track. Yeah, no, which I do agree with that. It's good to see. But, you know, next point to the next achievement, which will bring us into our main uh, topic is, so I finally passed my Part 107 drone exam. Uh, so that means that I can technically sell uh, commercial-grade drone pictures and videos, which is good in the sense of our, you know, kind of our business on the sense of uh, bare bones media. So... We can start uh, kind of capturing that, doing advertising, uh, you know, and drone videos and drone pictures. So if you have a business or if you know someone that wants, you know, engagement photos or wedding photos with the drone, uh, you know, you definitely reach out to me. I'm new in that step, but, you know, it's something I can practice, something to get working with. But it, I can uh, officially sell uh, drone videos and drone pictures. I did pass with a 92%, so I know something for the most part, <laughs> which said a lot. You know, to not land your drone on any air airstrip. Yeah, yeah, basically. And go, like, anywhere close to an airport. Yeah, so basically, so. yeah, the exam was, for most, for my, for the most of my understanding is, you know, respect airports. Like that's, you're just not allowed to be there. You can get permission, but for the most part, you just don't want to be around there. Right. But that leads into our main topic of actual the conversation today. Uh, you know, the study habits or routines that I did to get ready for this exam. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm out of college. I'm out of studying. You know, it's been a while since I've had to study for an exam. Um, so just getting into the routine of actually studying. Uh, it was a little, I would say, difficult just in the sense that uh, you have to set a routine to do it so I could get results, like pass the exam. So... Uh, for the most part, for the last month and a half, I think I studied every night, um, just because studying every night helps your mind process, process that information. So uh, that was kind of my routine going into this. So uh, it actually helped me out, passed the exam, less stressful. But, you know, that brings into the conversation of routines. We reached out to a lot of our friends and kind of getting, you know, a vibe of what they're doing for routines and how they manage their life. For the most part, it was all uh, people who wing it. So a lot of people during the week, unless they have a set hours to go to work, uh, most people just kind of you know, go through the weekends, like get up at a certain time, do this and that. But when it came to the weekends, for sure people didn't really have any plan, woke up whenever they did and kind of ran. But that brings up to so the other topics with, with Morgan about Habits. That. So... Um... The N I D D K. Not sure exactly what it is. Like if it's an institute, <laughs> didn't want to look at that. Uh, maybe I should have. But so they it's say. It's just not Wikipedia. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> true that. Go on <laughs> just go on there and change it. Like anyway. <laughs> but okay, so they outline four stages of habits, and it's the contemplation. So like. 
thinking about it, like, oh, I want to do this, maybe I should do this, to the preparation, so like, okay, I'm getting ready to actually do it. The action and then the maintenance. So when you think about habits, if you get a habit and you maintain it, there are some advantages and there's also some disadvantages. So like one of the main ones is habits are shown to improve your mood. Um, so like if you have a habit of working out in the morning, you're stimulating your mind, you're stimulating your body so that you're more prepared for the day. Um, habits also help you become the person you want to be. So if you have a goal, say you have this large goal of something that you want to reach in a month, two months, a year, maybe five years, your five-year goal, your little habits of what you can do now will help you reach your five-year goal, say. Um, so it helps you stay on the path of reaching your goal, which is something that's really needed. I mean, especially in my life. <laughs> um, so, but your habits should never stop when you reach your goal. So like, if you have a goal of saving $5,000, say, um, you shouldn't just stop once you reach your goal to buy the thing that you want to. You should still be um, saving your money, like being very conscious with that. Um, and then, so the one thing is that could, a uh, habit could be seen as like a disadvantage in life is when you're not able to distinguish like an unhealthy habit versus a healthy habit. So um, one of the articles that I was reading was like, you really need to make sure that you don't become slaves to your routines or your habits. So, um, and then... Because we're saying routine and habits are... Basically, yeah, your, your routine defines your habit, and your habit, well, your habits define your routine. Yeah. So, um, so you don't want to like you don't want to become slaves to your habits because then, as a person, you get very just like kind of in your same groove, and then if something were to change, like you will get very disturbed by change, and you don't really have that neuroplasticity to say, okay, like this is a change. I'm going to take it in, I'm going to change, and I'm going to move forward. And versus like being stagnant of I'm just going to stay in this because I don't want to change because I'm scared to change my habits because that's a big thing. So. Oh, and you do see that in, you know, you see that a lot in manufacturing sometimes and uh, some people are, I'd say comfortable, right? They're, they don't like to, you know, improve or move on just in that sense. I've, you know, I've seen it uh, more in, a lot more in manufacturing just people are comfortable doing that but sometimes there's maybe there's a better way or you know maybe it's just not healthy the way you're doing it right right so I know you mentioned that a lot of people have different viewpoints of habits and routines and I am someone who is very routine yeah. and habit driven um, but we can talk about that um, and kind of how your routines and habits kind of like filter into mine and how ours kind of go hand in hand. So are you someone who has habits, routines, like what, how do you kind of approach that? So the way I approach it is, um, so right now, uh, you know, I try to get, try to get enough sleep. I try to go to bed at like 930. That's kind of what we aim for. With my new, you know, my job as an account manager, it's kind of sporadic. So my routine would usually be try to go to sleep at the normal time that I have scheduled and get up and work out. Uh, with my current job, it's kind of been difficult because I work a lot of overnights. And you know that sometimes I get home at 3 in the morning, but I still try to get up by 8 a.m., which is you know not very healthy because you do need a certain amount of sleep for your body to rest and recover. I mean, you said it with the B12. <laughs> like, you need, you need exactly. to sleep. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, it's kind of... Uh, that's kind of that situation. But the one thing that I do is, you know, I always work out. My schedule, my workout schedule has been the same for, I want to say, at least 13 years. So Monday's chest, Tuesday's back, Wednesday's legs, Thursday's shoulders, arms on Friday. Always do arms on Friday. And I've done this for the longest time because in case you go out, you want to have... <laughs> to be attractive to the ladies. Exactly. But this is, <laughs> I've always done it. So my friends know this, that I do arms on Friday. 
Uh, and if you have me on Snapchat, I always have a, I always post a picture. Big and Willie I, style. And I always try to say, <laughs> trying to be big, big uh, Will Rose big. So if you guys don't have me on Snapchat, you guys see it. But I always do Arms on Friday. And that's kind of, that's always been, and I think it's always going to be that for the, until the day I can't work out or until the day I die. But that's kind of my routine on that end. Food, you know, eating wise, you know, try to eat around the same time. We try to have lunch around the same time and dinner around the same time. Sometimes I miss gauge the time wise and we eat super late. <laughs> like yesterday, it was like, Mario, what time do you want to eat? Let's eat at 6 30. And then we look yeah. at the clock and it's it was 8 o'clock. <laughs> so, um, but those, uh, so right now, my other routines is that every morning I check the stock market just because that's kind of want to see how things are doing um, financially. Um, and then I always, I've started reading a Spanish article every morning, um, just because where I, you know, people I work with and where I live, I don't really get to use my Spanish a lot. Um, so by practicing reading and um, speaking out loud, that Spanish has helped me, you know, just keep working on the Spanish. It's one of those things that, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's right. one of those skills that I really do appreciate. I mean, it's very, it's been beneficial in my career path. So it's just something I don't want to lose. Those are kind of concrete things that I've been doing just to keep my uh, routine. But I guess, what what do you consider a routine? I know that you follow a routine in, <laughs> by regiment when it comes to food and what you do in the mornings and what time you go uh, do stuff. It's, it's to a dot. So I have an alarm set at 5.55. I snooze that, have an alarm at 6 and get up. And then I... The night before, I, I have been trying to put like my clothes in the bathroom so I don't have to get up, buy my clothes when you're still sleeping. So, go to the bathroom, change my clothes, wash my face, brush my teeth, and then, um, I mean, even like my podcast, I have a schedule, so, <laughs> <laughs> so like, if it's a Monday, I will go out to the um, kitchen where our squat rack is. I will, depending on the length of, so I like also look at the length of the podcast. If it's not going to get me through like my 30, 40 minute workout, I don't want to sit there on my phone and try to find a different one. So like I'll look at the time, but generally on Mondays, it's like crime junkie. I'll listen to that, <laughs> find my headphones, put it in, work out, work out for 30, 40 minutes. And then, um, so for like over a year, I, which like ended like three days ago. Yeah. Which so. she's, been struggling, she's been struggling and trying to find a, a substitute for this. So I would make my pancakes. Um, and then. I mean, every day. I mean, you every get, day. All our friends, like her sister would know that she's making pancakes. It's every day. Every day. And it was, it was the most consistent thing in the world, which to me, if you eat the. Same thing every morning. I, I I got about two days, and then I don't want to eat it. No. But Morgan was because <laughs> so like I mean I would say my morning habits routines is very structured, and then like the rest of my day kind of just like flows. So that's why. But I feel like my habits in the morning really set me up for a day of like productivity. Yeah. So that's why like I would be very regimented. I would make my pancakes, make my coffee, and then sit and eat and um, kind of just like prepare my mind for work. Um, something that I've been really trying to do is not be on social media in the morning. So I'll like Snapchat, but I won't go on like Instagram. Instead, I'll play like word games to kind of like stimulate my mind a little bit more. Um, Which she's like, better than me because I, I'm on, the first thing I check is Twitter. If I'm waking up in the morning, because usually my buddy Mark will tag me in something stupid, but Twitter is my A1. But Morgan is a lot better off social media than Which, I am. I mean, there's good and there's bad, right? Like, a lot of businesses start on social media. You have to be present. And that's just something that I'm not, I've like, I'm not like super into, right? So, um,. I won't do that, and I've noticed that, like, if I do scroll in the morning, I'm just not as productive at work because I'm, like, not in the mindset of, like, okay, I need to work, I need to be productive, I need to do these things where, I mean, it's work, you gotta do things. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but then the rest of my day kind of just flows. Um, I mean, we've been squatting for every, every day for a couple months now, so 
during lunch I'll squat because I don't want to squat in the morning. So I'll do my normal workout in the morning, squat during lunch, and then when it was nice outside, I would go. We would go on like a walk or do something outside and at it's, night. And it's been pretty. It's been pretty cold here in Wisconsin. Right. So we're right. not able to do that. And I mean, we're just babies. It's not even like under negative degrees at this point. But yeah, I don't cool. like. I see people that are like dedicated, like walking yeah. because we I, have. It's been. It's been. It's been raining and probably ten degrees, and there you got people out there. Yeah. jogging and I'm like yeah I'm not, I'm not about that life <laughs> no I'm not that hard so but yeah I mean I think change and I I try to change like outside of my morning routine I try to be like very open to change um and just to like keep your brain kind of active so it doesn't really fall into that like one path stagnant. where you this can't what I do it really adapt to change um but yeah so we we're kind of like very different um yeah especially because so I, I have things that are you know have been routines have been you know i've been consistent in my life um working out but you know the squatting every day uh we, we started doing it just because you know our goal was kind of get bigger legs um, but i do have other friends that have we have suggested and have started doing it um, to kind of keep them motivated, right? To try to keep them, you know, hey, I have to go to the gym because I have to accomplish this squat. Um, and it's helped out a couple of our friends. And it's, you know, sometimes you do need change in that sense. And sometimes you need that structure to accomplish that because some people will deviate from that path. But we haven't been squatting every day uh, just because that's our goal. But it, I have seen it with our other friends that, you know, it's the one thing that is structured in their life. I do have a friend, Selena, that she, I was talking to yesterday, she loves chaos. That's the way she functions. So she can get stuff ready the the night of, but not. She is full last minute, everything. Let's put everything together. Um, but that's how she likes, you know, her life. I try not to do that if I have something planned, but sometimes things come up and we got to run. But Morgan's a lot and, better at it. But you like used to be very like regimen like not fly by the seat of your pants like I need to know all of the things all of the time where you really have turned the leaf of like okay like I'll be a little bit more but like still pretty hesitant but you'll still like take action when needed um and faster than what you used to but I think I'm very like fly by the seat of my pants if it's not my morning routine like <laughs> Which is true because uh, when it comes to things that you're, you're really, you know, you want to have this, you just like wing it. And I think that's kind of what you rubbed off on me because like you said, I was like, I need to know time, where we're going, dates. I need to know everything to the time because I like to have a schedule. But, you know, being with you, it's been more of like, yeah, sure, let's, let's wing it. But I'm still very cautious. I still am like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. It's still questionable. But I can, I can you have rubbed off in the sense where it's. You know, I would say that, yeah, YOLO, let's just send it and we'll, we'll figure it out when we figure it out. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been, I, I had noticed that in myself. Um, but yeah, no, besides the morning routine, everything else has been, Morgan's been pretty, <laughs> the, the pancake thing has been killing me because she's had to figure out what to eat in the mornings and she's not an egg person because we No, and I will <laughs> not, I will not eat copious amounts of eggs in the morning. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had uh, uh, Sam, I think, responded to Morgan asked uh, what, what everybody eats for breakfast. No, no one was helpful because they all said eggs, and Morgan's not about to eat six to 12 eggs no. every morning. Uh, so if you have any breakfast ideas, like, shoot them my way because... Uh, yes. I need them. <laughs> it helped uh, help her out for sure. But, I mean, even going back to, um, like, you focusing on Spanish, like, I've been really trying to learn Spanish so that's like one of my evening habits like I at least try to do like 10-15 minutes at minimum but really try to shoot for like an hour ish so just trying to also like I mean if it doesn't happen like if I don't get an hour like that's fine like I just have to at least do a lesson and I'm okay and which is which is you know been very good because it has you know you keep that routine and she has gotten better at Spanish so that's that's good to see and then you know it's everybody has a perspective on it and some people chaos and other people like structure. 
So we're, as you can see, we kind of do a hybrid of both uh, depending on the situation. Um, but that's kind of, you know, I think that's kind of wrapping it up and I think that's what we yeah. got talking about it. So, you know, there's, there's good and bad things about, uh, you know, routines, regiments, you know, you, if you get stuck in your ways, it's hard to change, you know, but always keep open mind that change is good, but also if you need it to keep you consistent, it's also a benefit. So there's right. kind of a double-edged sword the way you want to look at it. Um, keep but yeah. you consistent until it's a normal habit, a routine, and then kind of from there, take that normal habit, routine, and integrate it to something new where you want to implement something new in your life. Yeah. Cause you the, can move forward cause and I always grow think, and develop. You, you know, you your habit, just in the sense of the gym, your habit will get you to the gym but your routine is the one that's you're going to do it regardless you know sometimes you're not motivated and your habit is there and you do it because you like to but your routine is the one that's going to drag you out and make sure that you get it done right but also an odd side that the routine makes you you only focus on one little area and don't want to do anything else is also that but you know that's kind of what we do a hybrid role and i think it works for us but let us know what you guys do yeah you know, put it in the you, comments and let us know and what you do if it's a hybrid if it's really regimented or if you kind of just fly by the seat of your pants and you like chaos in your life <laughs> you know, so you know like subscribe share with your friends um you know if you are interested in some of these shirts reach out to us um and then you know you guys have a good good rest of the day and um <laughs> good rest of the day and you know subscribe like and share